ten of Revelation. And uh, the ten of Revelation is the inner tent. Uh, turn it up. Turn it on. It was on. It is on. Uh, it might be muted. It might be muted. We'll get unmuted here just shortly. Hi. Hi, Bobby. Are we ready now? Yeah. There you go. There you Glory to God. Even me with my hearing aid now, I can hear myself. All right. Now, we started out however many weeks ago, and we talked about being outside of the gate and how David referred to that that is coming to his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Now we are, we have gone through the brazen altar and we have gone through the labor and uh, we are now uh, standing at the tent that is the tabernacle and the um, what I call the tent of revelation, it can be called the tent of blessing, but it can be referred to either way. And so we're, we're looking at the tent of revelation. And when you see this, I hope that it will open your eyes to some very vital truths about how God deals with his people. So we're standing outside now, but because we have been through the blood, through the cross, and because we have been washed in the water of the word, if you'll read the smaller print, we're standing outside but ready to be called inside the tabernacle. Now, we have been taught to pray. But prayer does not always reveal itself the way we are praying. Prayer doesn't always come to fruition by the means in which we have prayed. But when we understand the tabernacle of Revelation, then we can understand how God is blessing His people through revealing Himself by calling you into a deeper dimension in Him. And that's what happened in the tabernacle. The outer court was full of many people, but only the priests that were prepared, that carried the blood, entered into the deeper dimension, into the blessing area, into the place where they could uh, be, be one step from approaching God. So we're going to talk about the tabernacle of Revelation. If you'll stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word, we will read from the book of Galatians chapter 1 and verse 12, and it reads like this. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the Word of God today. We pray that you will bless your Word. We thank you, God, that you can know you are opening our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, our heart that we may understand the Word. And I pray that as that occurs, that the application of your Word will become apparent to us how that we can go into a new dimension in you and understand a new place in you and realize how the blessings of God fall to your people. Now, Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit, and I surrender to him just now. I ask you to speak to us, Holy Spirit, as you always do. We simply give way to the, to the word and the voice and the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Now, bless us in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen, and you may be seated. The word revelation in the Greek means something uh, that is to be disclosed, <coughs> appears, or is coming or being manifested. So when the priests 
stood before the, the tabernacle door, the tent door, which was called the holy place, there was something on the other side of that door that was about to be disclosed. There was something that was about to be given to them or something that was about to be manifested to them. Today I want to look at that tent which we will refer to as both the tent of blessing and the tent of revelation because both of those occurred on the inside of the tent. Now watch me. Neither of those occurred on the outside of the tent. On the outside of the tent was simply purging and cleansing. Cleansing and purging. None of the, the, the blessings and none of the revelations about God occurred until the individual got to the next dimension. Those in the outer realm, in the outer court, were left in the outer court in the tabernacle process under the law to be dealt with only by the priest. So there was no dimension for the one who brought the sacrifice to go into the next step, only the priest. Now Jesus Christ changed all of that because He Himself made a way for you to have access into the throne room of God because He Himself called you a priest. And He called you a holy people. He called you a peculiar people. He called you His children. He called you sons. And Jesus Christ made you something you could not be, which was the righteousness of God, meaning that you were capable through the blood to stand at the gate, the door of the tabernacle, and be called inside the tabernacle to the revelation and the blessing of God. That's a great position to be in because in the Old Testament, they could not, the general populace could not go, only the tribe of Levi could enter into the revelation in the tabernacle. They were the only ones that could go into the blessing of God. They were the only ones that, that could come back out and even talk about what it was like to be in that position. But you have the right, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, to go in and approach God about every need. But here's the problem, and here's where the church has fallen off the rail. We think that being saved is all there is to this thing. We think that waiting on heaven and the trump to sound and the rapture to take place is the only time when God is going to reveal His revelation and His blessing. I'm here to tell you that's not so. God's idea and design for man was that man could take the walk from the door, the gate, in thanksgiving and praise, come through the blood, go to the labor, and become sanctified, go to the tent, and be called into an inheritance that was on the inside that is a deeper dimension. That's God's plan. For you, and for you, and for me. But we stunt the growth of the Word of God by not understanding that the revelation of Jesus Christ is the secret to getting on the inside where your needs and your blessings are waiting. Now watch. Paul leaving the labor and being totally prepared. There's another place we fall off the rail. We don't get totally prepared. We don't spend our time in preparation of prayer, meditation, study of the Word of God, attendance in service, being sure that we are filling our heart and our mind with the Word of God, sound preaching and sound doctrine, so that when the world crops up against us, and the things that are common to man attack us, we can realize the way of escape is simply in the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
First, I want you to see that there is always. Now, watch this now, because this is this is going to get ticklish in a microwave society. There is always a waiting upon God for a revelation. There is no revelation that does not come without prior proper preparation. Because when you execute prior proper preparation, you will prevent poor performance. Huh? I learned that from Charlie Cobb whenever I was in college. We would have people fail his test and he would look at us and say these words, prior proper preparation prevents poor performance, the six P's of success. And it applies to the gospel. Because when we don't prepare adequately and appropriately, moreover specifically the way God designed it to be done, there will be no access to the revelation that is provided specifically for you. The revelation will always come. Here's how it comes. It will always come through the Spirit. It will always come through the Spirit. It will never be relayed to you any other way than your Spirit, according to Paul's writing in Romans 8, working together with the Spirit and the revelation occurs. But yet we want, as a culture and as a society, to step over the Holy Spirit and to expect that the convicting Spirit of God was enough to save us and bring us into the revelation. But the tabernacle process did not teach it that way. Now I want you to get that. Because if you don't see that, if you don't understand that, then you'll get stuck off the rails and the gospel message will not work for you. The Tabernacle message <coughs> did not did not stop at the brazen altar. When they came in and the blood was shed, the tabernacle message did not stop. There was another step, wasn't there? What was it called? The labor. Then there was another step. What was it? What is it? It's entrance into the tent of holy, uh, the holy place called the tent of revelation. The Bible does not teach according to the way he taught about approaching God that salvation in and of itself was all you ever needed. It is enough to get you to heaven. It is enough to get your name written in the Lamb's book of life. It is enough if that is all you're looking for and all you're going to go after while the devil treats you like a rag doll and tosses you around to and fro and you remain children in the spiritual domain. That doesn't sound too appealing to me, does it to you? I don't want to be a child in Christ. I don't want to have to be at the enemy's abilities to come in and strike my flesh and to make my sin nature greater to me than the blood that Jesus shed for me. That's what's happening, you know. Our sin nature overcomes us and we go into sin because our flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, become so real to us, our personal needs exceed according to the common things the devil tempts you with what Jesus did on the cross in shedding his blood and we then are run through the gamut of life with all of its trials and wonder, what is and where is God? I thought they told me everything would be splendid if I just make Jesus my Savior. Have you ever heard that? Well, the reality of the situation is there is a walk to 
to a place called there. There is a way to get to a place called there. But the way must come through a life that is crucified in Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified. I died at the brazen altar. I died at the labor. When I look into the water, I see the revelation of Jesus Christ in me. And Paul said, it has become for me the way of glory. So there Paul teaches us that there is a depth of Christ in you. And that depth is a hope of, hope of glory. The revelation will always come through the Spirit. It does not come through the flesh, nor does it come through fleshly means. We see a lot of people pushing people over in the gospel today. We lay hands on them, they fall out in the Spirit, and we say, oh, what we call falling out in the Spirit. We say, oh, what a great move of God. Till one day I heard about a man that stood in one of the greatest TV preacher's lines and said he was there and he waved his hand, everybody fell down, cigarettes fell out of their pocket. He fell down with them, saw the cigarettes, picked up the cigarettes and ran. The flesh does not enter into the revelation of God. It never has, nor will it ever. Your nature that separates you from God, your sin nature, will never enter into the tent of blessing. Can't happen, won't happen. They can push you over all they want to. You can lay prostate on the floor all you want to. You can give any amount of money all you want to. I heard a man say the other day that he knew the prosperity gospel was in trouble when a man that was not even saved came and gave a large sum of money, walked up to him not even saved and said, now I'm going to see if this stuff really works. Well, how's it going to work for you, brother? It's not going to work for you. You don't know the revelation of Jesus Christ. Until you know the revelation of Jesus Christ, you will not enter into the blessing, nor will you enter into the tent where He is revealed in all of His splendor and all of His glory. It just won't happen. Now we wonder why the Bible teaches us about the power of Jesus Christ to heal and the power of Jesus Christ to save and the power of Jesus Christ to bless. Well, the reason we're not there is because we have not prepared to enter into the pit where the revelation exists. Hmm. The knowledge of Him and His Word and His voice. Now watch this now. Watch this now. It will come through the Spirit. It will always come from the wisdom of seeking God first in preparation for the manifestation. What's that mean, Pastor? It means that unless you are in the Word of God, unless you are meditating upon the Word of God, unless the Word of God is the priority of your life, Unless you are seeking after Him. Notice this. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now notice this, because we get caught up in the I'll give you rest part, and never consider the come unto me part. We never think about the fact that you've got to come to Him. How do you come to Him? You come to Him in prayer. You come to Him through His Word. You come to Him through meditation. You come to Him through priority. You come to Him by laying off the sin of the world. Then He says, I'll give you rest. In other words, once you come and you come correct, I'll give you the revelation that will meet your need. Oh, Lord. 
It will never come without proper preparation. That's how it was in the Old Testament. And that's how it is today. The knowledge of Him and His Word. Now watch this right here. The knowledge of Him and His Word and His voice is a prerequisite for any revelation of God. You will get no revelation from God if you do not know His voice. You will get no revelation from God if you do not know His voice. You will never inherit the blessing of God until you not only know His Word, but until you can discern His specific voice. What did Jesus say? He said, my sheep know my voice. Do you know the voice of the Son of God? Have you been able to discern the difference between the voice of the Lamb? Let me tell you something, church, it's not easy. The men on the way to Emmaus talked with Him for a whole walk and didn't know who He was. And then they sat down to meet him. When he broke the bread, all of a sudden they realized that was Jesus. But when he walked into the upper room and he began to speak to them, they knew his voice. And he said, peace be unto you. And they knew him. You'll never get a revelation until you know his voice will always express itself in the form of a call. Upon receiving the revelation through the prescribed method, the following will become available to the receiver. Now, notice what I said, and I want to say it to you again. It will come in the Spirit. It will come through seeking Him with prior proper preparation. It will come through the Word. It will come by recognizing His voice. It will come in the form of a call. And when you understand those five things, then you are ready to receive the revelation. Now, did I say that the revelation would come when you got saved? There is a revelation at salvation. That revelation is the salvation of God. But when you get to the tent, there's a deeper call that will answer and meet your need. The hope and expectation of being called to a revelation and the riches that are in the revelation, the receipt of the benefits from the revelation, then become your possession. See, when those priests walked into the tabernacle, they walked in to the smoke of incense that were created from the coals that were used to burn the offerings, the body of the offerings of the blood that they were carrying. When they walked into that room, have you ever been in smoke? It engulfs you. You walk into smoke, and smoke so engulfs you that you can't see who you are from the smoke. So when they went into the room, the benefits of what was inside the room engulfed them. The Shekinah glory of God engulfed them. The entire room was full, not only of the smoke, but of the smell of what had been sacrificed for the blood that he carried to be brought into the holy place. Do you not see that in Jesus Christ you have the right and Jesus made it so for you to walk into the throne room of God, the Shekinah glory of God, carrying and being covered by the blood and the Shekinah glory of God smothering that room because Jesus is seated on the right hand of God, the very depth of the revelation, seated at the right hand of God, so that you can walk in and say, what he did for me is my possession. It belongs to me. Yeah. 
Now then, let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. Because we're going to see Paul's correlation to the ten of Revelation. Paul said in Ephesians 1.17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, now I want you to see that for just a second because the Holy Ghost showed me something right there I want to share with you. He is the Father that resides in the Shekinah glory that they knew in the holy place of the Old Testament. He is the God of the revelation that gets you into the holy place where the Shekinah glory of God resides and where that glory resides is the meaning of every need that man possesses. Every revelation is in his glory. What a beautiful thing. That he may give unto you, now watch this now, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation comes through what? Man's spirit. Man's spirit takes on a spirit of wisdom. I know him and God has given me wisdom, good judgment, decision making, and ability to have concepts, insights, and ideas that I didn't have for myself, that I never possessed until the wisdom of the spirit of wisdom came upon me. And now that I have been cleansed and purged, I stand at the tent full of the wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him I read to walk into the tent of blessing. Revelation comes through your spirit. It's given by the Father due to our relationship with the Son. Our ability to live in that relationship with God through the Son, watch it now, is the only means whereby we can experience the revelation of God. Now I'm going to read that again. Watch me now. Our ability to live in relationship with God. What does that mean, Pastor? It means our ability to consistently be in prayer. Set a time for prayer. Set a time for meditation. I have a built-in alarm clock at my house. Her name is Maggie. She's about this tall and she's a German shepherd. <laughs> Five o'clock every morning she's in my face whining for something I don't know what. But my five o'clock alarm call calls me to pray. Set a time for prayer. Set a time for meditation. Set a time for God's Word. Set a time to be spending quality time with Jesus. See, we don't understand that in this society. That's why we've got 66% divorce rate. Because the time spent with relationships is almost nil. We want to make money. Right? We want to have a nice house. We want to have a nice hobby. The time spent for relationships are lost. Our ability to live in relationship with God through the Son is the only means for man to ever experience revelation. The only way. There is no other way. Now someone said, well, pastor, you give it to us. That's right. I give you a lot of revelations. Here's what I know. 90% of everything I say goes in this year and out the year. I watch it every day. I watch my students in this year, out that year. They stay with me. They do what I ask them to do. The next day I come back, give it to them again. Guess what? Got to do it all over again. Why? Because your retention of words are, are not ever going to be the single thing that leads you to learning. Words will paint pictures, but until you sit down with what is taught and told, 
Study it in the Word of God. Recognize it in the Word of God. Use it in the Word of God. Make it a fact of your life. It will never change anything. That's called relationship. And then you will experience the revelation of God. And let me tell you something. My mother tell you this. I preached the gospel since I was 16 years old. It hasn't been but the last five or six years until the Word of God has exploded in my life. I preach, preach good. People love to hear me preach. I preached all over the country. And people have enjoyed it. But there was not a definite revelation of the Word of God until I began to spend time in the Word, meditating, praying, writing, reading, studying, going after the Word of God. Then the Word of God became a revelation to me. And when it became a revelation to me, no sooner than that I got sick and I needed a revelation. But I had a revelation. And then the Holy Spirit showed up in my room one night and told me the words that changed my literal life. That God knew where I was and what I was doing and that His plan for me was a plan for peace and not for evil or revelation. But it had not come until I got a relationship with Jesus Christ beyond the brazen altar. See, we've wanted God to do so many things for us that we have talked with Him and prayed to Him and wondered why He hasn't. The answer is because we got stuck at the brazen altar. We were one of those in the outer court who never understood that relationship is the avenue to revelation. Think about it. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Look at what Paul says. Now somebody's got to help me here because you know last week I broke mine. Broke my watch. Glory to God. Left third. <laughs> The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Do you see that? Paul said that there was a place where your eyes could come open. Look at this. Here is the place where revelation occurs. Revelation only occurs when your eyes are open to it. Have you ever been driving down the road and your mind is somewhere else but your foot is still working on the gas pedal? Huh? You know how it is. Your mind is over here. Your foot's still working the gas pedal. Your hands are still holding the wheel. And then a revelation occurs. What revelation is that? There's a red light. That's a revelation. And it, it literally jolts you back into reality. And you say to yourself, Oh my Lord, man, where was I? I'm glad, I'm glad I saw that, that red light. And I, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you think, what could have happened if I hadn't seen that red light? You ever been there? We all have. Revelation occurs when your eyes are open. Revelation in the Word of God occurs whenever your eyes are open to the reality of the Word of God. To the promise in the Word of God. When your eyes, when you're in such a relationship with God, that your eyes, you see something in the Scripture, and it becomes so vivid and real. I remember right down the road one time with our daughter, and Lisa's brilliant, but Lisa had, in her younger years, had a few problems with this, that, and the other, and we had talked about <coughs> the fact that her mind sees in pictures. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. We were going on vacation in New Mexico. And uh, she looked up down the road and she saw the golden arches. And she said, McDonald's is just up the way. <laughs> I said, how did you know that? She said, I saw the picture. I said, what picture is that? And I'm looking down the road. I can't see anything. She said, I saw the golden arches, and I know that means McDonald's. And I'll never forget, she tapped me on the shoulder and said, my mind sees in pictures. When you begin to have the word explode in your mind, 
your spirit begin to bubble over with the revelation of the Word of God. Because you have spent time and you have given yourself to the Word of God. Paul spent three years in the desert of Arabia with the Word of God bubbling up on the inside of him. Three years. Three years of priority. Three years of training. Three years of listening. Three years of healing. Three years of hearing. Three years to come out and write most of the New Testament. Because he made a priority <coughs> of the Word of God. When you get your eyes open, the Word will open to you. Healing will come to you. Blessings and revelations will come to you. The eyes of your understanding refers to your spiritual senses that are alive and quickened to hear the voice of God. See, we, we missed it here. We missed it here. Listen to me now. Your spirit has been quickened to salvation. But the eyes of our understanding have not been opened and quickened to the revelation of how God reveals the promises of the book to his children. When the priest stood sanctified at the gate of Revelation, now watch this now, their ear was in complete tune for the voice that would call them inside the tent. Paul's going to show us that in just a second. This was the holy place. It was a place where the divine Godhead would unfold and be known directly before their eyes. They were pre prepared, however, for the, this process by what they had done in the outer court. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Paul is here referring to it. Here Paul gives us a glimpse of the sense of excited readiness that one can have when he stands at the door to the tent. Do you know that when you pray, there should be such an excited readiness of expectation that God is about to do something specifically for you? I will never forget that. When I laid on the bed of affliction and the word of God spoke and I knew that God was saying something to me personally, to me, out of the portals of glory, don't you think that my mind, my life, my excitement and my expectation just went into some stratosphere that I can't even describe? Not knowing the literal, brutal hell that cancer was about to put me through. But the Word of God had spoken a revelation and a promise to me. And while most around me thought I would die, and they came to see me, to see me the last time, I had two of my coaches walk in my room, face dead, jaw dropped, face white, looking at me, went back and told the people at school, he is not going to live. I lay in the bed with a promise from God, from a revelation from God, that now there's no evil. It's peace that I'm giving you. And it's peace that I'm sharing with you. It's peace that I'm sharing with you. And I'm here today to tell you the revelation of God is real. It works if you're prepared for the revelation. Yes, Lord God, have mercy. There is nothing that's going to stand against the revelation of God. What is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? Now we get into it. The inheritance that you seek is inside the tent. The inheritance that you seek is inside the tent. It is not in the outer court. It is not on the peripheral. It is not on the peripheral. It is not being a member of the church. It is not coming to church. It is not in you teaching Sunday school. It is not in you giving money into the planet. I could go on and on and on. It's not in the music. It's not, it's not, it's not. The 
The thing that you seek is inside the tent. There's a revelation of which belongs to you, but in order to get it, you've got to get inside the tent. And there is no way to get it except you preparing yourself to be in the tent. Revelation only comes through relationship. You can't build a relationship by buying it. Ask the rich young man that came to Jesus and said, I've done all of these, what do I like? And Jesus looked at him and said, go and sell your goods. And he walked away sad because he had many goods. You can't get it that way. My aunt Opal went blind one night. Wonderful, wonderful lady. She had, she had a personality that you had to, to really work with. She did. But she loved me. One night she got up in the middle of the night, went back to bed. Two hours later got up, blind as a bat. Was blind the rest of her life. I preached her funeral. They took her to a man that was supposed to be a faith healer. He prayed for people, laid hands on them. They had good money. The preacher told my uncle, if you'll lay a thousand dollars down tonight, in three days she'll be healed. He laid a thousand dollars down and three days later she was, uh, let me think how I put this, blind as a bat. Can't buy it. Can't buy it. Can't buy it. And the man of God that did that is going to stand before God one day. Stand before God one day to give an account for the lie that he told on God. And the hurt that he caused because he told a lie. Can't buy this thing, church. You're only going to get through it. Get to it through living it. You're only going to get to it through making it a priority in your life. If there is no priority, then there will be no revelation. If there is no revelation, then you will be tossed to and fro with every wind of God. Then the temptations of life will seem too big for you to overcome. When Jesus has made the way of escape. How did he do it, Pastor? He said, come. Come on. Get up from where you are and come over here. Because over here, is where I am, and where I am is the revelation. And in the revelation is the promise, because every promise is yea and amen in Him. Mm -hmm. And what is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? Inside the tent are many riches. Inside the tent are many promises. Inside the tent is the glory of the Father. Inside the tent is the revelation of what God has prepared for those who love Him. But that is not outside the tent. That is not outside the tent. The people in the outer court never knew the revelation that was present just a few inches away from their grasp. I want you to hear that. Why? Because they were not the ones that God prepared to go in there. They were the ones that God gave the need to have five different sacrifices. So the priests of whom he identified, could go into his presence and there present the offering. Now God changed all of that with Jesus Christ. God changed that with Jesus Christ.
But the problem is we still operate, now hear me loud, as a people that stands in the outer court. We expect the pastor, we expect the pastor to do the work. We expect the pastor to give us the word. We expect the pastor to do the praying. This is the universal church I'm referring to. Instead of understanding that in Jesus Christ, this is about you and Him. This is about your relationship to Him. And He has called you to an inheritance that is on high. Look at the words. It is rich. It is glorious. It is an inheritance that is for the saints. But it ain't outside the tent. It is only in the tent. They were the ones who would wait for the revelation at the tent of revelation and then see their inheritance upon entering the door. I want to ask you this morning. Would you really like to see the promises that God has for you? Would you be interested to know that Paul said these words, I have not seen nor ear hath heard the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Would you be interested to know that? Then would you be interested to know that Paul went on in the 10th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and said these words, But it has been revealed by my Spirit. Would you be interested to know that the things you seek for that are spiritual in nature what does a spiritual in nature mean, Pastor? If it refers to your safety, your soundness, your preservation, your healing, it is in the temple. If it refers to things that you desire to eat away by your flesh, it is not in the temple. But in the temple are the promises of God that refer to the, the abundance of your life. Now we look at that and we, we now listen to me now. I'm going to close here in just a second. We think abundant life is money. We think abundant life is houses. We think abundant life is a big car. We think abundant life is having all of the things that would make my earthly dwelling be comfortable and easy. Years ago, there was a man that I knew who won the lottery. Won the lottery. Everybody said, oh, my Lord. He's won that many. How many millions? I don't remember, but it was multiple millions. The next time I saw that man, he was sitting in a bar over a glass of whiskey, a little vodka, whatever they call that, a whiskey, with his head down. I walked up and spoke to him. He was despondent. He was down. He was discouraged. He soon, soon thereafter was robbed of hundreds of thousands of dollars. His life was turned upside down. His business was turned upside down. His family was turned up. Let me tell you, the things that make for earthly comforts are not the things that pertain to the promises of God. The promises of God are spiritual things. 
When they went into the tent, they went into a spiritual place. Someone said, now, Pastor, are you telling me that God doesn't bless us physically and doesn't bless us with material things? Well, I'm here to tell you, when your spiritual world is in order, the material world will always follow suit. But when the spiritual world is out of order, the physical and natural world will be in chaos regardless whether you drive a Cadillac or a Volkswagen. It's the way it works, ladies. This is a spiritual book. It is not a physical and material book. It is a spiritual book and the revelations are spiritual. They will only manifest themselves in the spiritual. Someone said, yeah, but, yeah, but Abraham was rich. Let me tell you how he got that way. Abraham was rich because his faith was accounted to him for righteousness and because he was a righteous man whose faith was in order, God blessed his material life. Are you there? Are you? Because you will not get to the revelation of God, the promises of God, until He becomes your priority. Jesus said these words. I'm going to close with this. Jesus said these words. I don't do one thing. That I, don't, I did not see my father do or hear my father say. Now listen, church. I love, I love the fact that God blesses me financially. I love the fact that I have a good job. I love the fact that my wife and I live in a home. People would look at our home and say, that's nothing. As a matter of fact, some have. My house is better than yours. Let me tell you about my house. My house, it has every conceivable thing that I could ever want or ever need. I have no lack. I have no lack. My car will run as fast as any other car needs to run. I have no lack. My spiritual life being in order, I have no lack. Whenever I feel like my body is beginning to be weakened, I simply go to the Word of God and I say, Lord, this is what your Word said. This is the revelation I'm living in. My spiritual life is in order. I'm living according to your Word and I'm expecting to receive the blessing of soundness because salvation promised it to me. And guess what happened? All of a sudden, I get up and the next morning, I am renewed. I live in a world of snot and coughing. We're cheering. They come to my class sick all the time. You know what I say? In the name of Jesus, you be well and I'm going to be well with you. Huh? This thing of the tent of Revelation is for every man, woman, boy, and girl who would make him a priority. Now I have to go back here and tell you what Paul said. I want to start with this. I started with it. I'm going to end with it. I didn't receive this of man. Neither was I taught it by man. But it came because I spent my time finding the revelation of Jesus Christ. And friend, if it came that way for Paul, that's the only way you were going to get it. Now you get to close your eyes. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your love. God, I challenged these today. I've challenged them to prioritize Jesus. I've challenged them to dive into the spirit world. 
I challenge them today to identify the promises of God that can only come through the spirit world. Some of them, Father, may need to spend more time with you in prayer. Some of them may need to prioritize the Word of God. Some of them may need to prioritize meditation. Some of them may need to prioritize sitting under and hearing the Word of God by means of radio, by means of television, for men that they can trust. Hearing the Word of God preached by men that they can trust. Some of them may need the depths that come through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whatever that need is today, God, I'm praying right now that the Holy Ghost is identifying in their hearts what it is that must be done for them to come to the wisdom and the revelation of the knowledge of Him. Because the people that I'm preaching to, both on YouTube and in this building, are people that have needs. They are people, God, that are represented and represent many needs. Some of them need healing. Some of them need saving. Some of them need a blessing in safety. Some of them need a blessing of deliverance from whatever it is that is binding and holding them captive. Whatever that need is, God, I'm praying right now that the Holy Ghost is identifying it in their heart. Now God, with that identification, with that identification comes the opportunity, the opportunity, the moment of opportunity when a man and a woman has to make a decision. Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost is helping them this hour. Am I ready to prioritize this Jesus? Am I ready to walk into the temple? My pastor has told me I'm a priest. Am I ready to walk into the tabernacle? As they sit right there, Father, I pray the Holy Ghost ministers. Now you don't have to do another thing. You don't have to stand. You don't have to make a confession. You don't have to make any outward or overt maneuver. But if the Holy Spirit is ministering in your heart today, and if the Word of God has somehow pricked you, and somehow convicted you or convinced you that you need to take the next step in to the deep and depths of relationship with Jesus so that the revelation of Jesus Christ can spring up in you and be in you rivers of living water. You don't have to say anything to me. You don't have to say anything to your partner. You don't have to say anything to those sitting around you. All you need to do is stand to your feet and lift your hands and begin to worship the God that is giving you gift. Standing and worship Him. God, we thank You today. Father, we honor You today. Father, we give You glory today. Father, we praise You for victory today. Thank You for relationship today. Thank You, God, for changing me today. Thank You, God, for transferring to me today. Thank You, God, for opening to me today the tent of revelation. For it's the revelation that I seek. It's you that I seek. It's not the wealth. It's not the goods. It's not the world. It's you that I seek. 
And your word said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. And I know that that rest is only in you. It's only in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And as I lift my hands today, and as I praise you, and as I thank you, and as I glory in your name, and as I give you all the honor and glory for your blessings upon me, I receive today, God. I receive today, God. I receive today, God, the priority of relationship with you. I crucify myself. I surrender to you, Father. In Jesus' name, I surrender. I surrender. I simply surrender. I simply surrender. I simply stop myself and surrender. I crucify myself that I can say with Paul, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live by the faith of Jesus Christ. I, I have done that today, and I raise my hands to say I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Him in my soul. I sense Him in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise you, my name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Son of all my God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Praise you, my name, Jesus. Father, we give you the glory. Glory to God. Glory to
we want to show how much we appreciate you and just tell you that we thank you for everything that you do, for your commitment to the church, to the Word of God, and your faithfulness, and sharing the truth with us, and bringing the truth every Sunday. So um, we have a meal for you, thanks for and we hope everybody can stay. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, um, it's awfully easy here for me. Someone would say, you only got 40, 50 people that, that come at very time. But listen to me, this is the most anointed place I've ever been in my life. The preaching here is so simple. The people here are so loving and so caring, and I appreciate it. And, and uh, I really appreciate this meal and this time together. And I will say this to you. I, I, I love you. I appreciate it. I, I thank you for what you're doing. But you know what? If you never did a thing, coming in this church and being in and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the greatest thing that I have ever experienced. God bless you. And then I'll bless the food when it's back. All right? Thanks again. God bless you for everything. God. We're very deeply touched by your love and appreciation. God, minister to the food that we're about to receive. Bless us as we eat and enjoy fellowship together. And Father, we thank you for these blessed people, for these wonderful folks that come and listen to the Word of God. I appreciate their faithfulness. And I appreciate their love. And I appreciate what you're doing in our midst. And I pray that in Jesus' name you will open the windows of heaven upon this people in this church and bless us in a great and mighty way. And we will give you praise in Jesus' name for everybody that worked on this, every food that was prepared, every hand that dipped into a pot or into their pocket. I pray blessings upon them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.